Hi kids. So here we are again with the magic of video with part two of our VTEC deep dive extraordinaire. Uh, we've already done the oil change, that didn't fix our problem. I did find that my liquid tape fix for the backs of these plugs really didn't hold very well. So I ordered new plugs off of eBay. The color codes are not correct, but that's okay. We can trace these out. I'm gonna show you how to solder in a new connector. It's gonna be awesome. So for me, the first step is uh, unhooking all of these plugs. There's one, two, three, four, five. These run on the back side and the passenger side of your motor. And what we're gonna be replacing is this plug, which I've actually replaced before. You can see where this was joined before. Um, and I replaced this with one from a junkyard that looked better than mine, but it's still not great. That's what this one looks like. And it is kind of, looks sealed to me, you know, but this is a new one. We're going to go with a new one just to rule this out. That's the other one we're replacing. That is the actual solenoid activation plug, which I don't think is the problem. Um, I think the problem is the oil pressure one, but as you can see, see that purple thing? That's supposed to be up inside there, sealing that from moisture. I don't know if you can even see it in this video. But here it is on the new one. See those little green things that go in around the wire? Same thing, different color. We're gonna replace that one with this one, and that one with this one. The first thing I wanna do, because, <coughs> pardon me, I know my colors are not correct. So let's see what goes to what. So our plug's gonna be in, installed this way. When we look at it, we can see that the black wires are reversed. And that may matter, it may not matter. But uh, just to be sure, I'm gonna put my white wire where my black wire is and my black wire where my green wire is. And I'm gonna start that by cutting these two wires right here, as long as I can get them. Cut them right off at the plug. And these are my Klein Dykes, which are, I don't buy a lot of expensive tools, but these are not cheap. And they're some of my favorites. Now we'll go ahead and pull all this off to give us a little room. Slide that over my new pigtail, just so it's there. Cause uh, what you'll end up doing is connecting all these connections and then finding out that you left this off. And that's stupid, who wants to be stupid? So the next thing I'll do is strip these wires back. Green wire, stripped. Black wire, stripped. Why do we call this a pigtail? I don't know. But if you go looking for it on eBay or probably Amazon or anywhere else, you're gonna probably find it listed as a pigtail. Now, what I do here is twist these together. Now it's time to solder. This is my soldering rig. It's a very cheap soldering iron you can get at Home Depot. It's a Weller, but it's the orange Wellers, which are the cheap ones. And my iron holder is an old coffee cup, which is a trick I've done for a million years. The reason I use an old coffee cup is it's not very likely to fall over. Let's go ahead and prep our tip, and we're gonna solder this. Hope you can see it. This isn't really a soldering class. We'll do that another day. The first thing you gotta do to solder a good connection is to get a good mechanical connection. Then you get your wire good and hot. Then you come in from the opposite side with the solder and let the solder flow through the wire. Maybe this is a better angle. Take your iron, get a little solder on it. Put it on one side of the joint. Make sure it's good and hot and put your solder on the other side of the joint. Ooh, joint. See, it should go through this wire. It should soak in, it's like a sponge. If it doesn't, then you've got what's called a cold solder joint and it's probably gonna fail. <laughs> Those look good. It should be nice and shiny, not gray. Don't blow on them when you get done, or again, you will cause a cold solder joint. This is shrink tubing. It's fun to play with. We're gonna put it on there, heat it up a little bit, and it's gonna shrink down. Make sure your wire's cold before you do this, or it'll start shrinking before you're ready. Just cut off however much you need. And slide it on there. The 
Then I heat it up with the barrel section. That's the kind of bluish section of my soldering iron. Leave a little bit of overhang. On the end there so that when it shrinks up your your wire isn't actually poking out the end you just kind of run back and forth across this and as it heats up it'll start to shrink and this will help keep the water out <clears throat> we're also going to tape this because well by now you guys have figured out that i hate having to deal with this i really want to love this car and this particular problem makes it difficult. I'm gonna take it and fold both of these pieces up like this. And then I'm gonna slide this other piece of tubing over it so that we have everything bundled together in a nice tight package there. Uh, package. Oh, too far. There we go. And go way out past it. We just keep wrapping it up, wrapping it up. There's our first one. Now, which, uh, which was the other one we said we were gonna cut off? Oh, this one. Same drill as before. Because our colors really don't match up on this one. The top one is red and the bottom one is black. So brown is gonna go to black. And red will go to blue. In same procedure, even though there's a little bit of old solder on there, that's actually gonna melt and help this connect even better. I promise you guys, you can do this. It's not difficult. It's not even expensive. This soldering iron's probably 20 bucks. Solder, soldering iron, probably $20, $25 total. Pigtails, I think we're about 10 bucks for a set. More shrink wrap. Personally, I find it fun. I find it entertaining and fulfilling to work on my own car. But I do not find it fun and entertaining to keep addressing the same problem over and over again. Now we shrink everything up, shrinky dink. If you leave your soldering iron here too long, you will burn through this stuff, so. Yeah, it's like ironing a shirt. How many of you know how to iron a shirt? There, so there we go on that. Now we'll tape that up and we'll start reconnecting everything. So for our next piece of this puzzle, I replaced the uh, <clears throat> the VTEC gasket on the back, which has a strainer in it. I keep these in my glove box because I've replaced a bunch of them over the years. <sighs> this one actually doesn't look dirty at all, does it? I replace this screen. This goes on the passenger side of the motor where your pulleys and everything are. Kind of goes behind your power steering pump, your tensioner and everything. And I've never changed it on this car. And since I have this constant reoccurring problem and one of the viewers actually piped up and said, hey, probably ought to change this. You know what? He's right. I should change it for nothing else, just to know what kind of condition it's in. So let's do that. Start off with the big, long, crooked pliers, and undo this power steering line. Get it up, get it up, get it up. Otherwise, it'll all leak out. You gotta get it up and out of the way. Tuck it back here. Stay. The next trick is gonna involve this 14 millimeter wrench. I'm going to hook onto that tensioner and this 18 millimeter wrench, which I'm going to hook onto that 14 millimeter wrench. Learn this trick because it's, uh, it's going to save you when you don't have a breaker bar someday and you need to reach way down in there with a small headed wrench. We pull this back. And get the belt off of the power steering pump. We're going to take that belt. Now we take our 12 millimeter, take this bolt out the top of the power steering pump. It's really kind of on the side. 
want to get technical. There's another bolt in the bottom. And uh, while I've got all this apart, I'm going to kind of do a little inspection because I've got a power steering leak somewhere. It would be good to find that. Man, that's a really long bolt. Uh, yeah. No, it's not. I'm just uh, old. Let's set this power steering pump up here. It's covered in power steering fluid. Of course, I just dump power steering fluid everywhere, so it should be, right? So now we're down to the tensioner, and that's got a bolt here and a bolt down there, and this pulley ends up being in the way. So let's see if we can take that off. Again, with our 14 millimeter wrench on there and our 18 millimeter Try to break it loose. The wrench on the nut. The other end, the hook like that. Breaks things loose. Good trick. Here's our tensioner. We're gonna check the bearing. Could stand a new one. Maybe this summer I'll get a new belt, a new pulley, new tensioner, just to know where I stand. Now we go after the actual tensioner belts. 12 millimeter again. One bolt in the bottom. Ooh, it's a little tricky to get to that one. Let's go with a different setup. This is why you want multiple socket setups. That's a, so as you can see, this uh, standard socket, six point socket on a three inch extension is too long. So we're gonna go with this deep well, which is still gonna give us a long reach, but not so long that it doesn't fit down in the car. Oh, and that barely gets it. It's right around the edge of this uh, tensioner. And the last bolt is right in the center. Gotta get uh, another 12 millimeter. Yank that monkey out. Long bolt, long bolt. Now our tensioner's loose. Let's take that out. Oh, probably shouldn't have dropped that. Made in Canada. That's one of them northern states, isn't it? This little hatch right here is where this gasket goes, right? Makes sense, doesn't it? 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and that'll take care of it. bolt what does it look like it's got a little crud in it it's not too awful bad frankly I was really hoping that would be like totally clogged up oh well and to put the new one in we reach for one of my favorite tools it is pretty crusty but I just don't think it's all that nasty. There's our new gasket. I'm gonna pop that in. Now we start putting everything back together. Bolt, bolt, bolt. Remember our trick for taking this 14 millimeter off? And it works for putting it back on too. That's pretty good. Now let's put our power steering pump back on. Power steering pump? Looks pretty easy to change. I'm probably going to get a new one and put it on here. Because I'm pretty sure this thing's leaking. It's another good trick. Use that kind of as a nut driver. So I can do this with my fingers faster than I can with a ratchet in these super tight spots. And you just put the last little crank or two on there. 
with the ratchet. And now we go to put our belt back on. Ow! Install this hydraulic hose. Boop. There we go. So what do you think, kids? We're doing a little test drive now. You think that'll make it go away? If this doesn't cure this car of this VTEC issue, I'm going to buy a new Honda VTEC valve. Oh, we're back in limp mode. All right, that's it. The only thing left, I've replaced both screens, both plugs. We did an oil change. The only thing left is the actual VTEC valve. So that'll be part three of this video. Yay. All right, see you next week for part three of the VTEC Chronicles. Ridiculous.